let's play some Road Warden. I know nothing about this game. It seems cool. Saw it during Ludonericon. I didn't watch any streams. I didn't want to get spoiled. It's got a cool pixel art aesthetic. Maybe a little roguelike on the side. I'm not sure. I just know it seems cool. Let's try a new game. Everyone knows to stay away from the wilderness. Most people would never risk a lonely journey. People don't go out alone. Road Wardens not only accept this struggle, they embrace it. Okay, so we're a kind of heroic figure. They deliver messages, assist merchants, burn human corpses, and if possible, get rid of the beasts and highwaymen. They live on the road, die young or retire early. It's a dangerous job, but a respectable one, and it pays well. I mean... I'm named Road Warden, I'm not gonna not go... <laughs> you know what I mean? Ooh. So there's a 40-day time limit, 30-day time limit, no time limit. Huh. Time limit? Is there some kind of rush? I mean, I'm going to do standard just for the first playthrough. 40-day time limit. I wonder what that's going to end up meaning. The wall is still standing. No animals, no stench of blood, good signs. This should be the place you're looking for. You're supposed to meet with a group of soldiers, but you don't see them, hear them, or hear the sounds of work. The gate is ajar, but the camp isn't safe. Necessarily. Okay. Might keep away the goblins and pebblers. I have no idea what a pebbler is, but it sounds non-threatening. But not beast folk or trolls, and the night is near. Your palfrey breathes heavily. It had a long day. Alright, we're going in. We... Dismount and take a peek. Seems safest. Take care of yourself. If you're hurt or exhausted, some actions won't be available to you. Okay. So, like, stats will determine your choices, it feels like. But also, just your health. Good. Your heavy boots hit the ground, and the pain of the long ride finally catches up with you. You stretch out, bringing your back and legs comfort. All you want is a table, a chair, a nice mug of beer, and some warm stew. With any luck, your axe won't be needed here. Go up to the gate. It's a military camp. It doesn't look the part. Plenty of wasted space. The fire pit is cold. Weren't we coming here to meet soldiers? Why is it a military camp? Two people are sitting at the table, tired and disheartened. They're looking in different directions, paying no attention to one another. One of them is holding a cup. After a moment, you notice the quiet humming. You recognize the melody of a light-hearted drinking song from the city harbor. I can just look around. I need to look around. They don't look like much of a threat. Let's look with caution. Normal, wild noises. The people in the camp didn't seem to notice our horse running up. The short, dry grasses barely cover the arid soil of this valley. You can see it right there. But you're maybe a minute away from the edge of the sparse woods, which get denser as they climb up the hills. At best, this trail has a few more rears before getting overgrown for good. Hard to believe it's the only route north. So wow, things are rough. Either we're on the edge of civilization, or there's some kind of, like, constant, super dank war against nature. No. It seems like kind of a worn down setting for another shelter. Let's try going. Takes them a little while, but they look in your way. First guy has bags under his eyes, messy beard, simple shirt, but decent, durable boots. So this guy, this guy knows his game. He's got the good boots, very important for travel. A mace with a head covered in iron hangs at his side, but he doesn't reach for it. Who's this second person? Just like you, she's wearing a gambeson, but hers is a bit loose, as if she took it off a corpse. So gambeson is like a medieval shirt. Her head is shaven, as if she's protecting herself from flesh-eating bugs. Didn't know that was a thing. Her eyes are weary, yet kind. She smiles. Considering the squad was sent here half a year ago, these two surely look the part. Six months. Though there should be more of them. Eight, you believe. Let's just let them speak. It's nice to see an unharmed traveler in this godforsaken shithole. Makes me just a tiny bit hopeful. The bearded man's voice is strong, yet timid. You'll be staying the night with us, I guess. We're soldiers, he and I, adds the armored woman. Her movement... Oops. 
for movement, I assume, switches from half asleep to relaxed. We'll do our best to keep the camp safe, but if you were to take the first watch, it would be a huge help. Travelers ought to help each other, wouldn't you say? You think for a moment. To fully rest, you'd need a good night's sleep. I mean, they're letting me stay in their camp. I should let them. I should let them get some rest, too. Sure, leave it to me. Fantastic, she rubs her hands together. I don't remember the last time I had more than half a night of sleep. So, the rest of these people are gone, right? That's what that, the, the context is telling us. The hours before midnight should be the calmest. Just wake us up if anything happens. Again, implying that there are times that aren't calm in the average night watch. The man flashes you a wide smile. It's easy to wake us up. Just yell. He drinks from his mug. Who's your lieutenant? Ah, you wonder how to phrase your question. Whenever you meet new people, you can influence how they perceive you by selecting one of the attitudes. Friendly, playful, distanced, intimidating, or vulnerable. Okay. So, we can kind of decide how the conversation goes on a person-by-person -person basis. Generally, I think I'm going to try to pick maybe two, and act that way towards most people. But if there's a situation where it's necessary, I'll pick a different option. Friendly, supportive, playful, jokey, distanced, kind of hidden, intimidating, threatening, vulnerable, sad, tired, hopeless. I feel like the kind of sarcastic, distanced, playful, nihilistic feeling matches what I'd want from this kind of game, so let's go for it. We'll start with distanced. These people are military. I'm looking for you, lieutenant. I was hoping to meet with your lieutenant. Could we talk for a bit? Friendly. I'm sure you're busy, so if you could just introduce me to your lieutenant. Playful. Distanced. I'm looking for your lieutenant. Intimidating. I'd rather speak with someone who's not going to waste my time. Wow, that is, that is aggro. I don't want peace. I want problems, always. I had a long journey. I need to have a word with your lieutenant is vulnerable. Well, let's go play for it. Just have fun with it. I'm sure you're busy. So if you could just introduce me to your lieutenant. The armored soldier spares you a polite smile. Next time, better schedule a meeting. This place gets really crowded these days. It's funny. She laughs. She doesn't laugh. She stands up. She pays little attention to the sword at her side. I figured you weren't here on a walk. Let's say it's me you need to speak with. Are you a messenger? Did you lose your mount? Or are you looking for help? I'm your new road warden. My horse is waiting outside. Really? The soldier in the shirt leans forward. That explains how you got here in one piece all by yourself. Better bring your beast here, adds the lieutenant. We have no hay, but I bet it dreams of dropping its saddle. A long pause. I'm Tulia, by the way. She reaches out her hand. I'm... Yeah, I'm gonna shake her hand. Call you Leto? I like it. I think I gotta stick with Bran, though. I gotta let people know who I am. Her grasp is confident. The shake is slight. Just keep your horse away from the tents. We don't need to smell its dung. Ah! There's this one issue. The soldier in the shirt also rises to his feet. We've no tent to spare. You'll have to use a blanket or something. No problem. I enjoy observing the stars. I should get used to sleeping on the ground anyway. I should get used to sleeping on the ground anyway. You walk through the gate. Your mount looks around and snorts anxiously. Not many humans could ride a horse. It's not only taller than you, but also bulky, as heavy as it is strong. You can get in the saddle with a single breath, but most people wouldn't know where to even begin. From every side, it's a wall of flesh. Horses were brought to the dragon woods from the conquests in the south. They can trot for a long time, but won't outrun some of the local monsters. Your palfrey needs you to survive, but without it, you too would be lost. And then there's an option to be good to your only companion or to be a dick to your horse for no real reason. I'm going to pick the nice one takes a few steps towards you, scolding you with another snort. You scratch the bottom of its neck with strength and confidence just the way it likes it. Humans see useful animals, and even pets, as monsters in disguise. 
Getting emotionally attached to them is believed to lead humans to their doom. But you know that horses need companionship. Horses are great. They're very important. I speak to it gently and lead it to the camp. You end up next to the fire pit. Removing the saddle makes the horse nicker with relief. You take a couple of minutes to examine its back just in case. While the riding equipment is not that heavy for such a strong animal, with enough time it starts to chafe. You wish it had something better to eat than this shabby grass. You should look for an inn. But first I need to unpack. You haven't brought that many things, and you lost one of the sacks while fleeing the Crimson Corpse Eaters. Uh oh. Worst of all, you have no rope left, but maybe the soldiers could share one. Shouldn't cost more than a dragon bone. That's a lot of a lot of stuff introduced in one sentence. Aside from the travel set, you own a few valuable possessions, essential for your trade. The fighter spent his savings on decent combat equipment. Fine gambeson, an axe made of steel, and a reliable crossbow with quarrels. A mage has talismans that help me use my powers, as well as an iron axe and a worn gambeson, where a scholar carries writing instruments and alchemical ingredients, as well as an iron axe, a worn gambeson, and a healing potion. I mean, my first thought in all of these games is always mage, because they they always end up overpowered. <laughs> like, I can't think of a time where, like, mage is a bad idea. But, this is kind of a rugged setting. I don't know if... I don't know how magic works. I'm going to guess it's a little more ritual-based. I'm not going to be able to just be shooting fireballs like it's sword and sorcery game in here. So maybe a fighter's a good choice. The fighter definitely seems like kind of the balanced choice, generally speaking. He's got good equipment, the scholar's herring carrying like half jank and a bunch of books, which is nice, but not necessary. I want to learn more. All right, so actually all of these sound like pretty good options. A fighter is better in physical challenges and just kind of roughing his way through things. He's got better equipment. And he's a best choice for RPG beginners, which I'm not really. I've got pretty good experience. The mage uses Numa, so it's got a limited magic pool, but if you run out of mana, you're screwed. Interesting. And able to negotiate some, like, highly specific situations, it feels like. Heal faster while resting is nice, because I have a feeling I'm not going to be as good in a fight. Detecting magic seems good. Come up tricks to distract beasts and stuff like that, yeah. There are times where an option's gonna come up. If I had magic, I'd be able to solve it easily. Pretty cool. And the scholar. He's just generally gonna be more knowledgeable and able to take advantage of situations better. He's also able to read and write, which seems like a really big thing, but he's gonna suck in combat. So all three of these sound pretty cool, viable, exciting. What I'm going to do is let you guys pick. Please make a comment. Fighter, Mage, Scholar. If you want to tell me why you picked it, that'd be great. Otherwise, I'm just going to tally the votes, and the winner is going to be our class moving forward, even if that's only one vote. So please, I'll give you a couple of days to give it a shot. Tell me what class I should play, and let's see if we can complete this run together to some extent. This is Manlet. All you short kings and queens out there, tell me what I should do, and I'll get back to you later.